good evening to you once again. This is a, a tutor, a manual from Benport Consult. Tonight, um, we want to look at um, VAT, or tonight our tutorials is going to be based on value added tax. And uh, when we say value added tax, what do we mean? Or what are we trying to say? Now, when somebody asks you what is value added tax, value added tax basically is a consumption tax or is a tax that is levied on consumer purchases or is a tax that is paid by consumers. In other jurisdiction, it is called goods and service tax. So when you don't see VAT, you will see GST. So in Ghana here, we use VAT. But in the outside world, some use GST, meaning goods and service tax. Now, the rate of tax or the rate of VAT in Ghana we have three types, or we have three different categories. When we are talking of VAT, then three things come into mind. We have the standard rate, currently in Ghana is 12.5. We have the VAT flat rate of 3%. And then we have the zero rated of 3%, of 0%, sorry. Now, the VAT rate is 12.5% is calculated on a taxable value of a supply or on a taxable supply of goods and services. Or somebody can say the value of what? An import. Now, this value of taxable supply shall include get fund and NHIL. So when we are talking about taxable value, we mean three components. Three components makes up a taxable value. And in the subsequent lecture, you know what a taxable value is. We have get fund, we have the standard rate itself, and then we have NHIL. So the taxable value we mean here is 17.5. So everything inclusive, making that one. Now, what is the NHIL? So NHIL is a levy on goods and services supplied in or imported into Ghana. And all goods and services are subject to a levy unless they are what? Exempted. Unless these goods and services are exempted, then it cannot form part of this NHIL. The levy is charged at a rate of 2.5% on the VAT exclusive selling price of the goods supplied and rendered. Now, in every law or in every jurisdiction, there are exemptions. So this leads us to what we call VAT exemptions. So when we talk about VAT exemption, we mean goods and services that do not attract VAT or are exempted from what? Goods and services. They are exempted from the taxation of goods and services. So that is what we mean by what? VAT exemptions. Now, in an attempt to look at VAT or what constitutes VAT in its entirety, we have what you call the input tax and then output tax now in a nutshell whenever you buy you pay input tax whenever you sell you collect output tax so when we are talking about input tax input tax are charged on the purchases made by a business or an individual 
input tax are tax levied on purchases by a business or an individual. Someone can also include they are levied on purchases and expenses made by a business or an individual. So if input tax are on purchases, then the vice versa is on sales and the vice versa is output tax. And so therefore, output tax are also levied whenever you sell these goods or these services or they are collected whenever an individual or a business, registered business, of course, made sales. Now, exempt supplies. We'll come to supplies, then you get to know what supplies mean. Exempt supplies. There are certain items that are exempted from tax. And just to list many but a few, we have all live animals bred and raised in Ghana, animal products in their raw state produced in Ghana, agriculture and aquatic food products in its raw state produced in Ghana, certain medical and pharmaceutical products, basic food items usually in their raw state, textbooks, supplementary readers approved by the Ministry of Education, crude oil and hydrocarbon products, immovable property, including land, life insurance and reinsurance, civil engineering, public works, medical and education services, supply of financial services, goods for exclusive use by the disabled, machinery and part of machinery specifically designed for certain activities such as dredging, manufacturing, railway, tramway, on, on and on and on. You have specified fishing equipment, specified agriculture input, postage stamp, mosquito net, paper for the production of exercise books and textbooks, mild carbon steel for the manufacture of matches, take in national lotto organized by the National Lottery Authority. These are some of the supplies that are exempted from taxation. Now we have what we also call special relief supplies. So whenever you supply any item to the president, it is exempted from taxation. All these are called relief supplies. Okay, they are called relief supplies. Then whenever you supply it to the embassy or the mission, they are exempted from supply or they are called relief supply. So therefore, the rate on them is exempted. You supply major relief items approved by parliament, vat register manufacturers for raw materials at importation. All these things are meant for or they are relief for supplies. Now, when we talk about supply, supply, supply means the supply of goods and service. So when somebody talk about supply, the person means both goods and service. Unless the person says supply of goods, then he's specifically telling you something. So supply is made up of supply of goods and services. And we can have taxable supply of goods or taxable goods, and then you can have exempt goods. You can have taxable service, and then you can have what? Exempt services. Now, when we talk about supply of goods, it includes sale, transfer, exchange, barter, license, rental, disposal, in any other form of this, they are called supply of goods. Supply of services mean any supply which is not supply of goods or money and includes the performance of service for another person the making available of any facility or advantage or tolerating any situation or refraining from the doing of any activity. So these are some of the transaction in which you can identify a supply of service from especially the very first one, 
the performance of service for another person. Now, at what point do we recognize supply? And that is what we call time of supply. The time of supply means the point in time when the goods and services are considered to be supplied. When the seller knows the time, it helps him identify the due date for the payment of what? Taxes. So the importance of knowing the time of supply is to help you and facilitate the payment of your taxes. Now we are just explaining the terminology so that you become familiar with them. Taxable and exempt what? Supply. So there are two kinds of supply. We have taxable and the what? Exempt supply. We have two types of supply. Taxable and exempt supply. The first ones are kinds of supply. So that's why we have the supply of goods and supply of service. But the types, we have taxable and exempt supply. Taxable supply is a sale of taxable goods or delivery of taxable service. So an importation of goods is a taxable supply. I get any. So when we talk about taxable, it means that you, you pay tax on it or you apply tax on it. That is what you mean by taxable supply. Now, how does VAT apply on a taxable supply? Now, when making taxable supply, you apply the standard rate on the taxable supply. So a VAT registered business collects VAT from their customers on their sales and have to remit it to the GRE. In practice, VAT is included in the sale price payable by the customer and shown on the VAT invoice issued by the business. For example, when, the, when you sell something for 112.5, what the customer is paying is 112.5, but originally, the value of the item is not 112.5. The value of the item is 100. So you apply the VAT rate of 12.5 on it. Let's assume 12.5 standard rate. So 12.5 on it, then the customer paid 112.5. So now the original price is 100. Are you getting a bet? You must pay the VAT of 12.5. When we are going in our subsequent lectures, you see how we add the NHIL and the uh, uh, get funds. But now we are dealing with that of what the standard rate so that you, you get what I mean. Then we have exempt supply. Exempt supply is a sale of good or delivery of service which is not taxable. No VAT is charged on such supply. So exempt supply include, I already listed some of them for you so you can follow suit. And how does VAT is applied on exempt supply? Now, when you don't take care, you may think exempt supply and zero rated supply are the same. But there is just a thin line in between exempt supply and zero retail supply. Now, the difference between them is that one is taxable, one is not taxable. So zero retail supplies are actually taxable. They should have been, they, they are taxable, but the tax rate on them is zero. That is what zero retail supplies mean. They are taxable but the tax applied on them is zero. You only tax them at a zero rate. But exempt supplies, this one, they fall outside within the jurisdiction of VAT. So they are not even taxable in the first place. They are specifically what? Exempted from taxation. 
So that is just what uh, I wanted you to know. So let's look at zero retail supplies now. So a VAT registered business making zero retail supply will charge VAT at what? Zero percent on the selling price. Technically, there is no VAT charge on the invoice. No VAT to be collected from the customer and remitted to the GRA. So because you are producing zero retail supplies, you don't also charge people VAT. You don't also pay VAT. Are you getting the scenario? Good. Now, how then do we charge VAT? How then do we charge VAT? Once you are registered for VAT, you must charge VAT for every sale that you made. Unless you have supplied a relief item, which is classified as an exempt item, I get in. And only persons or businesses that have been registered for VAT can charge VAT. If you are not registered for VAT, you cannot charge VAT. You cannot collect VAT. And so therefore, if you don't file for VAT, you don't also collect VAT or you don't, you don't, you don't get your VAT to pay back. Now, a VAT invoice or an approved computer generated VAT invoice must be in use for each transaction. So either you go for the VAT invoice book at the GRA as a registered VAT agent and be issuing your VAT receipt from there, or you have a system set up for you in your accounting software that you use. They infuse the VAT calculation system inside, which will be calculating the VAT. So sometimes when you go to the shopping malls, you go to the to the pharmacies, you go to the restaurant, you can see that the receipt that they give to you, the food you bought costs 10 CDs, but they charge you a VAT of 70 pesos. So you are paying something like 10 CDs, 70 pesos. That is what it means. So the VAT invoice is the approved official receipt that has been uh, uh, authorized by the GRE to be used by VAT registered what? persons to use for their issuing of so instead of them to issue a company receipt they'll issue that particular VAT receipt indicating that they have charged you VAT. Are you getting it? Good. Now let's look at mixed and composite supply. When we say mixed and composite supply, okay, the supply of two or more individual supply of goods or services of any combination of goods and services by a taxable person for a single price is called a mixed supply. In a mixed supply, the combination of goods and services are not bundled due to natural necessities and they can be supplied individually in the ordinary course of what business. So when you supply two different kinds of goods and services in aggregation as one, we consider them as one, then we call it what? A mixed supply. But when we talk about a composite supply, it means the supply of two or more goods and services by a taxable word, person, which comprises of the combination of goods and services naturally bundled and supplied together in the ordinary course of business is called what? composite supply. In other words, a composite supply comprises goods and services which are bundled owing to what? natural necessities. I get it. So because of their nature, these two must be grouped together and supply as one. When we talk about a taxable value, what do we mean by a taxable value? What do we mean by taxable value? So the amount of VAT payable is the value of supply multiplied by the rate of the VAT, the rate for the what? For the commodity. So that is basically what we mean by 
taxable value. At the beginning of the lecture, I told you what you mean by a taxable value. So when we are talking about the taxable value, we need the standard rate plus the NHIL and then that of the get fund. So basically, it's the market price of an item if you are paying with an item or you are paying cash. Okay, so the value you pay if you are paying cash or the value you pay if you are using butter, I get any good. So that is basically what we mean by taxable value. And the law states that the taxable value shall be a value at the time of lease or high purchase. So you should be able to take note of this one too as well. Wanted to look at some explanation for you here then uh, so when we are talking about a uh, uh, mixed supply any supply of goods is identical to the supply of service is part of the supply of service any supply of service is identical to the supply of goods is part of the supply of what of course that is basically what you mean by mixed and composite supply let me read what is in your material over here they said different goods and services are sometimes invoiced together at an inclusive price that is a mixed supply so different goods and services which are invoiced together at an inclusive price is called mixed supply some items may be chargeable at the standard rate and some at the zero rate. In such cases, supplier must account for, for tax separately on the standard rated and zero rated element by splitting the total amount payable in a fair proportion between the different elements and charging tax on each of the appropriate rates. What the mean is that you can supply items which some are exempt, some are zero rated. At the end of the day, you must segregate it so that it makes sense. Okay, good. So that is basically what um, your material or your book is saying. Let's 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 move on. Now, what record should be maintained by a VAT registered person? So a VAT registered person must maintain the following records: account showing the total output and input tax due from or to the commissioner at the end of the month relevant accounting records such as sale and purchases record your cash book your ledgers copies of all tax invoices and receipts issued copies of all invoices and receipts received from purchases made then import and then what export documents are all accounts that must be kept by the VAT registered person now filing of return this is a classical example of a memo issued by the Ghana Revenue Authority. And they issued this memo every month for taxpayers as a reminder for them to pay, come and file their taxes. And failure to do so attract a penalty. So let's reach a portion of this. So the Ghana Revenue Authority reminds of VAT and HI get fund levy registered business is that VAT, NHI, and Get Fund Levy communication CST returns for March 2019 should be submitted on the CST returns form not later than Tuesday 30th April 2019 which is the last working day of the month so anytime you collect VAT you file it 30 days after the collection okay now you file returns early and avoid payment of penalties for 500 Ghana cities. So whenever you, you default in payment, you pay 500 Ghana cities. And then after the 30 days again, you pay 10 Ghana cities. Each day you fail to file it within the stipulated time. So if they give you one week to come and pay and you don't pay and come the next day, you pay 500 Ghana cities. After that day, you pay, they will be adding 10 things. So today it is 510. Tomorrow, 520, 530, 
140 and then your problems begin to multiply now when it comes to the cst that is the tele telecommunications the mtn the t gold and the thing they pay a fine of 2000 ghana cedis and then each day from that day they will be paying 500 ghana cedis so when they fail today 2500 tomorrow 3000 3500 4000 and then it is coming it is compiling like that for you so that is a classical communique from the commissioner to the taxpayers now this was the policy announcement by the government on april 20 uh, in july 2018 when the mid-year budget was being read where the vat was changed from 17.5 to 12.5 initially we were bundling everything as 17.5 but since july 2018 they have splitted it and now you know that the component now is nhi having its 12.5 and then the vat now is 12.5 and then get fun is 2.5 so this is a communique by the government where it's give a policy breakdown of what must be done everything in that manner so when you go on google you can see the communique i just copied it for you to have a look at it now how to invoice in the new bad system too has been given so we'll do a calculation on it then you understand so i did a theory here then we'll look at the practical so the old VAT system is at the rate of 70.5 which is made up of 12.5 vat standard rate and then where they pay five percent to the national health insurance levy and then they pay 2.5 towards the gets fun and on and on i get in but however in the new system there's a separate levy that's 2.5 for get fun another 2.5 for nhi these two levies are supposed to be initially calculated on the vat exclusive amount to arrive at the first set of taxes to add to the vat exclusive amount after adding these two levies to arrive at a new subtotal Calculate the VAT of 12.5 on the subtotal. Arrive at a final VAT to be charged to your customer. Are you getting it? So that is how the new VAT system is supposed to be calculated. Or that's how you are supposed to calculate VAT in the new, new system. So I have the old system here and then the new system. So in the old system, Let's say you sell a printer for 1000 Okay. You sell a printer for 1000 So they said charge a part of 17.5. So you are striking 17.5 on the 1000 You get 175 So you add the 175 to the 1000 Then the customer is going to pay 1175 That is what you mean. But in the new system, when you sell printer for 1000 you charge get fan of 2.5, which is 25. You charge an HI 2.5, which is another 25. You get a subtotal of 10 and 50. Then you now strike 12.5 on the 10.50 to get 131.25. Then you now add the 131.25. To the 1050 you get 181.25 so this is what the customer will be paying in the new system and this is what the new policy by the government is entreating all of us to do and this is how we compute vat in the new system so with this new system you have to 
fit file the get fan and the nhr together on the returns form and returns form a and the vat on a separate form also the get fan are not recoverable so you cannot reduce them by your input VAT. however you have the option of treating them as expenses in your income statement to reduce your chargeable words income you realize the new VAT being a compounded tax allows the addition addition of get fund amount before 12.5 is applied so ladies and gentlemen this is just a basic explanation on the VAT for you, which will give you more understanding. If you don't understand anything, just link me up and then I will explain for you further and then you understand. So have a good evening. Thank you all for listening.